G'day everyone, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. We're coming at you live from Washington DC. They, they don't talk like that here, I don't know what that was. I've arrived safely here in uh, in the USA for the first time and it has been a whirlwind couple of days. Uh, I've had to battle jet lag, dog allergies, my sister has a huge dog, and the exhaustion of playing with kids all day. But I'm here and today we're going to do a little video based on the Adelaide Crows and I'm recording this video of course not long after the Crows have knocked off Carlton by a stunning 56 points and it inspired a little bit of a video based on the projection of the Adelaide Crows and how well they're going and I feel like we're really starting to see a good side that's been brewing away for a little while now. I feel like we might be starting to see the maturation of a really good side and it's kind of giving me Fremantle from last year vibes. So a few weeks ago of course I recorded my power rankings video and I copped a little bit of criticism for having Adelaide fairly low in those rankings. Had them about bottom five or six, I think, um, which now a few weeks later looks very, very silly. I do kind of stand by those rankings to an extent because those rankings are meant to reflect how a team has gone up to date and their exposed form, even if Adelaide have shown signs of, you know, playing a lot better than a bottom six team. And I do acknowledge that, but it was tried to base that on results. Did I still get it wrong? Possibly. But either way, since I've recorded that video, I feel like, particularly in the last three weeks, we've seen this side really, really raise the bar of expectation of what their new standard is. They had a disappointing couple of weeks to start the year, sold themselves short, but now we're starting to see them put together four quarters more consistently. Sorry, I just flicked the light off. It looks like it's blurry on the screen. Forgive me. I'm still getting used to this Americano sort of set. As I said, a bit of a slow start to the year for Adelaide when you consider how well the last three weeks have gone. Of course, they had a great start against the Giants uh, to ultimately lose that game by 16 points and then had a massive comeback against the Tigers uh, where they were 45 points down. I can't remember if they got the lead or if they certainly got within one point of Richmond before ultimately losing the game by about five goals. And since then, they've beaten three sides that we thought would be aspirants for finals this year. The interesting thing about both of their losses to start the year is that they kind of played both of those games in halves. They showed up for half a game against GWS, got five Five goals in front from memory at half time and then ultimately lost the game and the same thing with Richmond they got 45 points down to get within a point shows that they're capable of scoring in fast bursts but hadn't put it together for four quarters yet and of course ultimately came out of those two games with zero premiership points they kicked eight of the first 12 goals against GWS and then with Richmond scored seven of a series of nine goals in that game as well so like I said they're capable of getting runs on and their forward line is damaging enough to make use of the opportunities when they're getting enough ball inside 50 and again, we saw that capability of scoring fast again in the showdown, their first win of the year. I think they were a few points down at the 11 minute mark of the final turn before kicking the final six goals to run away with that game by 31 points. Against Fremantle, we saw a more even performance and that was when I commented last week that I thought it was the most complete Adelaide performance we'd seen in some time. It was an interesting game where, you know, the inside 50 count against Fremantle, it was fairly even, but where Adelaide really got on top was their run and spread from the contest and their ability to get much more quality inside 50s for a start and their forward line like I said is efficient enough to make use of those opportunities especially when you contrast that with Fremantle at the moment but their performance against Carlton uh, earlier today as I record this in America was easily their most complete performance of the lot so far they had 67 more disposals both inside and outside so in terms of both contested and uncontested possessions they smashed Carlton they had eight more clearances against a stacked midfield that included Paddy Cripps who only had 19 touches but the interesting thing is when you look at the stats of inside 50s generated we've been talking a lot about their forward line and how efficient it is and how young it is and how talented it is. In this game, they had an efficiency inside 50 of 65% to Carlton's 40%. So that equates to 33 shots on goals from 51 inside 50s. Carlton had two more inside 50s, yielding just 21 shots on goal. We're seeing Josh Rochelle take his game to the next level after a fantastic first year. No signs of second year blues from him. He's averaging nearly 20 disposals, obviously seeing a little bit more time in the midfield, but still bobbing up for two goals a game. Isaac Rankin as well has kicked 12 goals from five games this year. And again, sometimes his radar's been off. He could easily have more. I think the move of Jordan Dawson to become more of a midfielder this year has seen obvious benefits. The fact that he had seven clearances in this game really speaks to that. Like I said, it was on an easy midfield they were coming up against. It is quite arguable at the moment that Jordan Dawson has nine Brownlow votes on the trot from the last three games. Rory Laird has been a little bit quieter this year, at least following from a fantasy perspective, uh, but he had nine clearances in this game, 37 possessions. But the important thing is as well, they're not really relying too much on guys like Laird and uh, particularly Rory Sloan at the moment. A lot of their improvement has been generated from their youth. Now, the thing I find fascinating about Adelaide is the fact that they've invested so heavily into the front half of the ground in terms of their rebuild. So, of course, Riley Tilthorpe was pick two. Isaac Rankin, they gave up pick five for. He was originally pick three. Josh Rochelle, pick six as well. All forward half players, all damaging and all 
exceeding expectations that has to be said with the exception of maybe Rankin he's the most mature out of that lot but they're all playing really good footy already so I've said it in another video in the same way that Adelaide's strength during their almost premiership years around that 2017 era their dangerous forward line was a hallmark and you get the sense that that's going to be the hallmark of this team going forward as well it's an interesting thing with Adelaide as well when you look at their side it seems to have lacked a little bit of star power but they'd certainly get the job done when you look at that back six guys like Nick Murray Jordan Butts Tom Dode and uh, the first this year Michael Annie as well that's an inexperienced and raw defense but they're still getting the job done week to week equally in the midfield in terms of raw star power for a side that's potentially going to play finals this year outside of Rory Laird and perhaps now Jordan Dawson who's become a midfielder it doesn't scream a grade star midfield that being said they are incredibly tough an incredibly fast side. It does make you question as well the impact of Burgess, who's now over there as their high performance manager. I think his title was elite in his field, turned the Melbourne Demons or contributed to the Melbourne Demons becoming the fast and brutal side that they were. We're now seeing that start to develop at Adelaide. I've been a fan of the way Adelaide's rebuild is progressing for a number of years now. Don't take too much heart out of uh, what I said in the power rankings video. I was trying to make a snapshot on their, their actual results generated, but I've always thought they've played with really good spirit. Their youth seems to be coming on fast faster than it seems to on average at other clubs. And their ability to score fast and really take the contest to the opposition for a while now has been really, really impressive. And I think we've got the makings of a very, very good side here. I think I said last year or the year before, looking at Adelaide's rebuild, that's where I wanted West Coast to be in a couple of years, and I'm doubly down on that. They've got a wonderful blend of youth and experience. And even if this is not the year that they breach the top eight, long term, I think Matthew Nix has had a proven ability to get the best out of the 22 he's got on the field each week. Adelaide right now is giving me Fremantle vibes of last year, where a side that had been rebuilding for a little while, it still felt a little bit early for them to bounce into finals. Fremantle, of course, finished fifth. Adelaide have three wins from five games now, arguably should have four, potentially five. Probably You probably wouldn't give them the Richmond one, but against GWS, they probably should have really finished that result off. But they're playing like a side that will play finals this year. They've beaten three sides that you think will be in there. Potentially not Fremantle now. They've really dipped out of the top eight calculations, at least on current form. Port Adelaide's a massive maybe. We don't know what the hell's going on there. But Carlton, you expect, will play finals this year. And in fact, it was Carlton's first loss of the season. So I put the question to you guys, what do you think of Adelaide's chances this year? Could they be reminiscent of last year's Fremantle side that surprised everyone and won a home final? I think potentially they could be. However, the next five weeks will be revealing for the Adelaide Crows. Next week, they've got the Hawks in Tassie. And I still think there, that one could be a little bit iffy because we don't know which side Hawthorne will turn up. But you'd think Adelaide are the far stronger side. But after that is where it gets really juicy. They play the Pies, they play the Cats, and the Saints. Then they've got the Dogs and the Lions. So, so you've got three of last year's top four. You've got St Kilda, who are currently undefeated on top of the ladder. And you've got the Bulldogs as well, who should feature close to the top eight, if not inside it. So assuming they beat the Hawks, which you probably shouldn't assume, but let's say they do. If they can pinch two out of those other five results, they come out the other side of that really tough fixture run. I think we're a good chance to see Adelaide in the finals this year. As always, guys, I hope you enjoyed this impromptu little video about the Adelaide Crows. Let me know in the comments what you think of the Crows. Do you think I'm going early? I think we have to acknowledge how impressive they're playing right now and the talent in that forward half of the ground in particular make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new guys and i'll see you in the next video cheers